we covered this once upon a time. It takes a long time for these court proceedings to move forward, so there was a drag ban introduced in Tennessee. And I think that that one in particular was one that was like, it could impact people just walking around in their everyday lives. I'm not sure that that is the case in this particular one, but like there are so many of these laws. It's frankly hard to keep track of which ones are more restrictive and draconian than the other ones. But we're starting to see this whole question of the First Amendment as it relates to, quote, drag, and what does, quote, drag even mean? And we're this is also we're seeing the problem of trans people being equated with adult content. So the reason why we're covering this again today, uh, you know, this this drag ban was introduced in Tennessee, and then a Tennessee court struck it down, and now it has made it to the appeals court, the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals, and they have basically said that this it's legal, or they kicked it back down to the lower level court. So I guess that means that this is not necessarily going to rise to the Supreme Court immediately, but we could see a case like this getting kicked up to the Supreme Court at some point, which is not good. So right now, yeah, the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals has reversed a lower court's ruling and upheld the drag ban, uh, the ban on adult cabaret entertainment in front of children. Okay, define cabaret entertainment. You know, children, okay, like... I understand that some cabaret involves like maybe the person takes their shirt off and they're wearing pasties or something, but we'll get into why this is a problem in a second as we get further into here. The court found that Memphis theater group Friends of George's, which puts on drag shows, failed to show standing in its challenge of the state law and instructed the U.S. district to dismiss the case. The theater group filed suit against the state claiming the ban on cabaret performances and drag shows violated its First Amendment rights. The district court sided with Friends of Georgia's and declared the law unconstitutional, permanently enjoining Shelby County District Attorney Steve Mulroy from enforcing the law. Mulroy appealed the ruling questioning the cabaret club's standing and the merits of an injunction overriding the ban. The appeals court determined that the group failed to meet its burden that the ban would put it in danger of prosecution and sent the case back to the lower court with orders to dismiss it. I mean, it's, there's an, an obvious danger of prosecution. Okay, whatever. Um... The case stemmed from the legislature's passage of the Adult Entertainment Act in 2023, which made it illegal to put on adult cabaret shows on public property or in places where the entertainment could be seen by a minor. Adult cabaret entertainment, in this instance, is defined as, quote, adult-oriented performances that are harmful to minors. Okay, that is extremely broad. Harmful to minors can be interpreted in a million different ways. This is one of the reasons why laws need to be written in a very explicit manner. You need... You can't just say generally, oh, this could be harmful because define harm. What does harm mean? That leaves it up to the courts or like any individual cop basically to determine this is harmful to children. We're going to arrest you or whatever. So performances which, fe which feature topless dancers, go-go dancers, exotic dancers, strippers, male or female impersonators, and similar entertainers. Oh my God. So this is why this is a problem, because it's equating male or female impersonators with topless dancers. So if you've ever done drag, or if you've ever watched people get into drag, it's layers and layers and layers of you're wearing like two layers of tights, and then the dress, and then like you're wearing a corset, and you're wearing like, I don't know, like there, there's so many layers of clothing. It's not like a stripper. Drag shows are not inherently like a stripper show. In fact, it, like it ruins the illusion if you start taking parts off of the costume. So this is why this is an issue. And like, okay, a male or female impersonator, can you define that? If a trans woman is giving a comedy show, not a drag show, she's just dressed as a woman and she's doing a drag show, is that considered a, an adult performance that's harmful to minors on the basis that the law could just like arbitrarily decide that she is a male she's a female impersonator instead of she's just a transgender woman you know this is the problem with this is that it can leak out into other areas 
what does it mean to be a male or female impersonator? And why are you equivocating male or female impersonator with a sex show? This is, it's not a slippery slope. This is like, they've been doing this for years. We just covered it with the, the project 2025 is trying to make any transgender ideology is equivalent to pornography and pornography should be criminally liable. So, okay, you think any trans thing in public could be criminally liable as porn because you made it illegal, right? You know, they're equivocating trans existence with sexual content that's inappropriate for children. Yeah, this is basically RGR logic, but instead of foot fetishes, it's drag. Yeah, listen. Um, so yeah, the reason that this law was passed in the first place had something to do with complaints about a pride parade that could be seen by children. Hi, I'm Lexander and this is Mitternock. You should hit the like button and subscribe and check out the Patreon and ooh, look at this hoodie I'm wearing. It's merch. Check it out. Links in the description. Thank you. So the district attorney, the, St the Tennessee attorney's general office pointed out that afterward, the Sixth Circuit found that the district court was mistaken in saying, quote, there is no constitutional interest in exhibiting indecent material to minors. What does indecent mean? Again, you're just saying like, a person cross-dressing, even if they're fully clothed, is indecent? As a state overflowing with world-class artists and musicians, Tennessee respects the right to free expression. But as the court noted, Tennessee's, quote, harmful to minors standard is constitutionally sound, and Tennessee can absolutely prohibit the ex exhibition of obscene material to children. Again, obscene. Just dressing in the clothes of a gender that people think you shouldn't is considered obscene. Now, Democratic Representative Afton Ben of Nashville criticized the ruling, saying, This ruling is absurd and flies in the face of small government principles. It targets drag performers under the false pretense of protecting children, even though the court acknowledged that these performances are not harmful to minors. So, Jesus Christ, like, what else is there to say? Yeah, like, we can, sometimes, some of us appreciate being objectified, but, like, just the idea that you being giving any performance while quote cross-dressing i i know that some like some bands have recently protested this like cis men will put on dresses while they're performing in tennessee or what have you um but n like things are only illegal for certain groups you know they will pass the law that says you're not allowed to cross-dress but they know that they're only attacking trans people so they're not going to go after the band of cis men cross-dressing. They're only going to criminalize trans people. That's how this works. It harms their souls somehow, I know. Like, define harm. How does this harm? Men dressing as women is like the origins of Western theater. Yeah. Gone are the days when there's an assumption that women can't perform in the theater. In fact, you must perform in the theater. Yeah, it comes down to a belief that LGBTQ people are indecent. Like, that fundamentally... This is indecent and obscene and not appropriate for children. What about trans women dressing as men dressing as women? Mm. Mm. Anyway. So, yeah. I'm not sure what the punishment is in this. If it's like... I mean, I'm assuming it must be criminally liable to some extent. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. Like, how is this enforceable? What, like, what are the punishments for this? I don't think it's going to be in this decision. This is the decision from the district court, so this is not showing the text of the original law. <sighs> yeah, they're stooping so low as to regulate what people wear. That's why this is a First Amendment issues issue. Like, we're... We're finally running up against this, like, do people have the right to cross-dress, basically? And in Tennessee right now, they don't. Not if you're a performer of any kind. They probably would stone us if they had their way. Listen, I don't think you're too far off. Do you think they're going to go back to the days where women couldn't wear pants? I mean, I feel like that is an underlying motivation here, for sure. I think that would be pretty unpopular, but... The thing about fascist takeovers is that they don't require a majority support. So we'll just have to see. Last month was Pride, now it's time for Wrath. Thank you so much to my patrons, including Tiago Nascimento, Mersh Rolvog, Jack, Amanda B., Michelle Winter, Wellington Marcus, Danielle McDonald, DZXN, Spooky Heather Sylvia, Pastnell Infinity, Suzanne Maynard, Sojo, Jamie Jam, Desi Quiche, Jericho, Kevin Young, 
Liam Hodgson, Athiette, Elevy Nobody, Mr. Atheist, Elizabeth Bartell, Celeste, Nova, and Michelle Fratteroli.